Episode 6, Bridget's Be Ballin'. Hello and welcome to the Tactics Board. We're hoping the picture's a bit better on the board part of today's broadcast using a new camera, so let us know how you feel about that. As you can see, I'm a little out of character in the way I'm dressed today. That's because we're going to be talking a bit about basketball tactics being used by St. Bridget's. So first off, we're going to look at Bridget's defence on the board itself. Now, this is a pretty rough approximation of certain things Bridget's are doing. 13 here is Jamie Clark. Typically, you'd have three men closing in on him. They wouldn't be on him all the time. But you'd always have men in range to be able to close down Clark, leaving him as a limited option for Cross McGlenn for large parts of this game. Now we're going to look over here again on the flanks. This is typical, again, it would change side to side the pressure, but Cross would have trouble moving the ball at speed on the flanks. And again, Bridges, they'd have roughly nine or ten players in their own half at times defending. So even when Cross overloaded with seven men in attack, you still had a numerical advantage of Bridges, and they could adjust and try and force play out wide, limiting Cross's chances and crucially limiting the speed of their movement. Cross and Glenn like to skip the lines. Bridges really weren't given that option because they were limiting the options inside for them. So there weren't really that many good matchups. Now in the first few clips, you're going to see what happened when Cross succeeded and why they succeeded. Cross and Glenn's two best goal chances of the game both came from turnovers, and it's easy to see why. Shane turns the ball out here in this play, gets immediately taken in by Cross and Glenn, down to Jamie he Jimmy Clark, who's uncovered for once. He gets the ball into the onrushing Paul Hughes, he uses a clear pass to go, and in those rare moments of reach, end up trying to get their cover back to stop Cross and Glenn. Yeah, it's Brala Paul Hughes, Gullahan Tossi, Agus Tasha, Harava Akli Kahimira, Agus Min Tasha, Arakanche, Hinta. Cross McGlenn's other good chance to an early second half against their turnover. You'll see here Bridges lose the ball in front of goal, effectively meaning the defensive shape is lost. Cross McGlenn moves the ball quickly, get in up behind the backs, but Jenny Tarkas is back to goal, so he can't see that he has room to turn and shoot. Instead, he looks at the pass outside. The finish is off, but on the whole, this is a good move, just with a poor execution on the pass. Despite the heavy pressure we see, Jamie Park had some success in creating chances or getting his own scores from open play. In this first you'll see three men converge on Park. He has just enough time to get the pass away, and Kyle Carragher finishes. On this next score, again, the pressure is very heavy, but Park manages to play a 1 2, get just enough space to get outside for the shot. But once again, Bridges with good close down defence, limiting the options of Cross and Sack. Cross just doing enough work to get the space to get the effort away. This point here from the first half is a rare instance of Bridget's trouble breaking down. The ball gets turned over on the right flank and gets across the Clark quickly. One of the things Cross McGlenn couldn't do very often. Clark is just enough time before the extra support and defence comes along makes the finish. This is not a fast move for the surprise you all day. This is probably a bit faster than the rest though. Garvin Dolan with a quick ball upfield. Darren Dolan then with a pass inside to Frankie Dolan. And Frankie with a finish. There really wasn't enough time for Cross to, to adapt, get their extra defence back. And the critical thing was, they couldn't get those extra numbers they rely on from the front up and down the field. This play is a bit easier to see the basketball thinking here behind Bridges' attack. They were looking to exploit Daniel Callahan one on one. -on they did this with a long ball towards McKee. McKee takes it, drives on, has offense to the left, which means the defense isn't able to commit to him, and he finishes to short range. The next clip we're going to look at is Bridget's second goal, scored by McHugh. Now what we're going to see here is it's a quick play from Senegal Bride. He's aiming for McHugh, but McHugh doesn't get, get up. But what happens is Frankie Dolan comes around, and as he comes around, both cross McGlenn players hit the deck, with McHugh somehow right side of them. Now Cross do get an extra man back in cover, but at this point... Dolan has the edge on going to go. The pressure's enough to limit the shot, but McHugh's there for the finish. And that's crucial in, in uh, how Bridget's made use of one-on-one -on -one matchups. We're going to see it again now in VT. 
What are we seeing here? With Senegal Bride with a quick ball inside, two on two matchup, McHugh and Darwin on two defenders. McHugh is a target, but he doesn't get to the ball. But in the process, Frankie Darwin runs around, and we see both crossing down players hit the deck as they try to adjust. Darwin now has a clear pass to go. Extra defender gets there in time to pressure the shot, but McHugh has the angle to get up and make the easy finish. The final play we're going to look at is that screen play we're about to show you next. It's from the first half, McHugh again involved. What McHugh does is he's going to cut down towards the end line, but then he's going to start coming back up. And what he does here is he brings the defender with him, giving time for Senna Kilbride to start moving outside. McHugh out to Kilbride. Kilbride goes down, bringing his man with him on a one-on-one. -on -one. But what does McHugh do? McHugh goes inside here, meaning the full-back can't fully commit to Kilbride. The screen basically drags McHugh's own man with him, and suddenly Senna Kilbride with a clear pass towards goal. He opts for the pointed shot, hits the post, so it doesn't pull off. But what this shows is Bridges can score, or at least create scoring chances, when they're outnumbered in attack. That's going to be very important in the All-Ireland Final against Ballymun. Finally going to look at the screenplay from the first half. McHugh here is involved again. He's going to cut back, give the ball to Senna Kilbride. Look at McHugh bring four defenders with him, leaving Kilbride with a one-on-one. -on -one. His final finish is supposed, but it's the type of play Bridge is going to have to use to exploit Ballymun's defence in the All-Ireland Final. That's all we have time for in this particular episode. And um, just looking, one, one last comment regarding Bridges' defence, we couldn't really show it too much here because the VT we had didn't really have much defensive action in it. But the crucial thing was, even though Bridges were very physical, it wasn't size that mattered for them in this game, it was positioning. And that's very important for teams who may not be having that many bigs at the back. Clearly their one-on-one -on -one play, particularly against Danny O'Callaghan who was singled out, does require size up front. But what they're doing in defence, a much smaller team could really make use of. Like, if Eamon Fitzmaurice is watching, the first thing he should do, sorry, the fourth thing he should do after subscribing to the videos, uh, following this on Twitter, at Action81, and of course going to the site, is really just get on to Clarny Basketball Club and ask him for some tips. Because bringing those elements into the defence, teams who are undersized in defence can really make up for their lack of size and try and reduce chances for forwards inside. In attack, teams who are likely to use a high ball should really start looking at ways to exploit one-on-one -on -one matchups. It's an interesting change, I suppose, but uh, for now, that's it. So follow us on Twitter, at Action81. I have no idea how clearly that's coming across on VT. Subscribe to my face in the corner, and go to the site at action, sorry, www.action81.com.